everybody. Thanks for coming back to the CEO for Life Experience podcast and vlog. And I have Alberto Otero. I hope I pronounced it right, Otero. Is it, it let's start again. Is it Otero? How do, how do I pronounce that? Yeah, you know, uh, I'm from, from Spain, but you know, Spanish people have two last names. And, you know, yeah. so the, okay. the official is okay. Alberto Gonzalez Otero, but yeah. Cool. I'll do it in three, two, and one. Hey, everybody. Thanks for coming back to the CEO for Life podcast and vlog. And I have our special guest today, Alberto Gonzalez Otero. Uh, Alberto, <laughs> thanks for being here. Appreciate it. Well, thank you, Robert, for inviting me and, uh, and for pronouncing my name. So, so uh, in such a great way. <laughs> it's a yeah, difficult one. So, so if you're just yeah, if you're just tuning in off off uh, recording and off camera there, where I was, uh, you know, talking to Alberto, I'm like, so how do I pronounce your name? And and so I got a good education. And this is one of the reasons why I love doing the blog and podcast is because Alberto shared with me we got to use all three names. That's part of the culture. That's part of his, his background. And so, you know, that's awesome. So already learning a lot, Alberto. So thanks. <laughs> that's a good start. That's a good start. <laughs> Thank you. Cool. Well, listen, uh, so thanks again, everybody for coming back to the CEO for life experience. So in all our uh, episodes, we always try to find great people that at least on the surface show what we wrote about or what we talk about in the CEO for life experience um, book. And so Alberto has this incredible LinkedIn title, um, called the chief purpose officer. And so Alberto, what is the chief purpose officer and how does that apply into what you do and who you are today? Well, I have to say that, you know, that, that title, you know, uh, you know people tend to like it a lot. <laughs> uh, it started more like a, a kind of a, a joke, right? Because I, I just founded my business and I wanted to create my own company. And then I didn't want to have CEO there. You know, I'm a bit, uh -huh quite informal uh, so I'm not that into um, into titles and things like that uh, so I thought you know I'm all about purpose my you know, the company name is just on purpose so I will be the chief purpose officer instead of the CEO um, and when I started that way you know uh, it seems to resonate with people and people feel kind of curious about that and and they reach out to me so, so that's actually working well but it's also so in a way uh, what I'm all about right so I'm trying to do everything I do on purpose and, and trying to bring more purpose to, to others and to companies and all that. So that's, yeah, that's what I do. And, and I think the title. You know, it, 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 those folks yeah. that are listening or watching, you know, um, Alberto is being very humble. He's got this incredible background. So go look at his LinkedIn profile. He's got an incredible background in SaaS, corporate, um, his own advent, his own ventures, volunteer service, but everything seems, at least on the surface, Alberto, when I see it is everything is on purpose in terms of a giving, a giving mode. So maybe share a little bit about, um, about how you found your purpose. So anyone that's listening, that's trying to figure out how do I find my purpose? How do we begin that journey of determining what our purpose is? And then two, does your purpose change? Well, I'll start with the second question. And, and I think it changes or it evolves, as I normally say. You know, the, um, your life is um, is changing as well. The the situation you are in, the conditions you know around you, um, you know that that also evolves. Um, and I think the purpose evolves with that as well. And I think there is a component which is kind of the core of your purpose, uh, which is more linked to who you are as a person, and that is more difficult maybe to change. You know, it needs to happen something very dramatic for that to change, um, you know, uh, significantly, I think. But, um, but yeah, you know, uh, purpose evolves. And, 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 you know, I didn't have like, you know, it took me kind of 20 years to find, <laughs> to find mine or, or to uncover mine. Uh, so it was a process, actually. Um, yeah, so anyone who's listening and watching, it's okay if you haven't found your purpose yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. No, definitely. Uh, you know, um, I always, when I do, uh, you know, keynotes and things like that, I, I said, uh, you know, I'm the worst example of someone following his purpose because for 20 years I, I, I didn't. And, and, you know, uh, if I go back those 20 years, I have almost 20 years in experience in sales and sales leadership roles. Um, but I don't like sales uh, or I don't mm. like sales completely, you know, and, and I never did. Um, I started in sales. I didn't know what to do uh, first when I had to decide what to study. Um, I wanted to be a professional soccer player, right? That was my dream. And I was playing at quite decent level. 
But of course, uh, when you get to an age when you need to, you know, in theory, study something or decide something, then people start telling you, you know, oh, that's impossible, that's a hobby, you know, focus on your studies, uh, you need to do something, you know, uh, more in that way. And, and, and then you have two options, uh, do what they say or, or, or not. Um, and in my case, I, I, you know, I, I was always quite responsible. So I, I said, okay, I need to choose something. Um, and then I didn't know what to do. So I, my degree, I have a degree in public administration management. Uh, you know, I, I had to choose something. I didn't want to, uh, so to do this, but I, I wanted to be a sports teacher, actually. Uh, mm -hmm. I like sports. I like, you know, I was good at those. And I was also good with kids. I always had this, you know, um, yeah, skill to connect with kids and to help them. Um, and, and basically, I went to my father and said, yeah, I want to be a sports teacher. And he said, no way. <laughs> How are you going to make money with that, right? Um, <laughs> And, and yeah, I don't have any traumas or anything, a very good relationship with him, but, but you know, he said, no, you need to do something else, right? So then I chose that one and then got my degree and then I had to do a master's because, you know, it was the moment to do a master's. So I did a master's um, and in the end, I just wanted to work and start in sales. And, and that's the first thing I found. And the problem, I said the problem, but the problem is that I was good at sales. Um, and, you know, mostly because I normally and generally connect well with people and people, mm -hmm. you know, uh, seem to trust me quite quickly and, and easily. And in the end, I was able to show the value of my products and, and you mm -hmm. know, uh, I did well in, in sales and kept on going. My first job after my master's even was selling encyclopedias door to door. Uh, so that's how everything got started. <laughs> And, um, and yeah, you know, to uh, keep it a bit short, but basically I went from one role to another one, always in sales and then to leadership. And I did well, was successful uh, for everyone else. And for me, kind of half of, uh, of, of that, because, you know, yes, I was successful, but I didn't feel like it. You know, I, did, I, felt, I felt, yeah, there's, I don't like selling. I, 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 I can do something else, but I, don't, I didn't know what. Um, and then it's the more years you have doing something, the more difficult it is to, to, to change, even if you know. Um, but yeah, at some point and during this journey, I got inspired by different uh, sources. Um, and in the end, I made uh, kind of my own exercise to help me get clarity on my own purpose. And, and that's, you know, I designed the exercise, I did it myself, and then I saw some links in between things, and then that's how I, I got this clarity. But it, it, again, it took it was a long process. Uh, I took the time eventually to think about all these things and put all the things together. And then uh, there was a moment then that uh, yeah, you know, I can I think this is it, right? And that's when I started my own company and quit my job, um, and uh, that's what I do now. So, I mean, so much to unpack here, Alberto. So, you know, we're talking about our purpose and you being a, an expert in purpose. You know, I love the fact that you've lived it. It's not something you just read in a book or, you know, or bought some class and now you're trying to, you know, help other people with it. You actually have gone through the, the realistic process of developing. How do you define purpose and then how do you execute and go on it? You know, some things that I, that I wrote down is, you know, it's taking you 20 years. Um, you know, but at that moment in time, even if you don't know your purpose, you had to choose something. There's nothing wrong with choosing something, right? And just starting. What are your sure. thoughts on that? Yeah, yeah. And this is something that I mentioned as well my, uh, when I work with clients that, you know, if, if you, uh, sometimes we have a lot of ideas, you know, uh, sometimes we want to <clears throat> find our purpose, and, but then we, we like too many things, you know, and, and then we are not sure about you know, what to do. And the best thing, then is to do something and, and by start doing something then you you can see if that was it you know or not or maybe some parts of it are things that you really enjoy and and you think well this is it but then the other part is not and then you kind of get inspired as you as you go and then you just shift you know but at least you take steps towards getting closer to your purpose um yeah, yeah. I love how you said that, as you know, just, you, you just got to do something 
it, because it is going to evolve, right? Everything is going to change. And we talk about that in the CEO for life is, you know, you have to have some sort of level of self-awareness, create a vision, mission, those kind of things, but don't be afraid to change it because you're going to change as well along the way. Yeah, indeed. And you can spend your life thinking uh, and trying to get the best <laughs> idea and clarifying what you really want to do and all this, but then, uh, yeah, uh, maybe you don't find it that way, you know? And, and I think um, there is from, from this book from Mark Manson, um, The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck. I don't know if yeah, uh, yeah. you know uh -huh. that one. <laughs> so yeah. he, he talks about this as well. And he says, yeah, most people think that, you know, uh, first comes the inspiration, then the motivation, and then the action. So you need to have a great idea, then you find the motivation to start doing it, you know, executing on your idea. And it, in many, many, many ways, many times, it works well or best the other way around. So you start with doing something with the action. Right. And by yeah. doing that, then you get inspired and then you find the motivation to, to keep doing it or do something different, right? And I totally believe in so that. Good. It's so good. So, yeah, anyone that, uh, you, so our audience, if you're you know listening or watching, regardless, go back and listen to the last 35 seconds and take it off one and a half times speed because Alberto just hit us with a, with a nice right hook you know, uh, you know, that flow of, you know, inspiration, motivation, and action, flip that, start with action. And then, uh, and then you also, I, I wrote down a quote, and I'm going to, I'm going to hang on to this one is, uh, you can spend your life thinking, man, Alvaro, that's so true, right? I mean, one day you could just wake up and, you know, you're 65 or 70 years old, and you're like, boy, I was just thinking the whole time instead of doing something. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And, and indeed, one of the, you know, those sources of inspiration that helped me do what I do today uh, was a, a research and, and actually a book as well from um, an Australian nurse. Um, her name is Bronnie Ware. And basically, she, um, she had a similar story. So she couldn't really find her purpose and she didn't know what to do. She did many different things. And in the end, she um, started working at palliative care you know, taking care uh, of sure. people yep. uh, that who were going to die, basically. And, and she was at their homes, uh, not at the hospital, but at their homes and accompanying them during the last weeks of their lives. Um, and she was having conversations with these people and, and, you know, they would share what they regretted the most now that the way they were going to die, right? Yeah. And, yeah. and so she, her book is uh, The Top Five Regrets of the Dying, um, it's mm -hmm. a beautiful book. I would recommend it to anyone uh, listening. Uh, but basically, the top regret uh, by far was I wish I had, um, <laughs> I wish I lived a life true to myself. I had lived a life true to myself, not the life others suspected of me. So I wish I had lived a life true to myself, not the life others suspected of me. Sure. And that, that was what I was doing, you know, I, I was yeah. living the life all the suspect of me and, and not what yeah. I really uh, wanted to, to, to live, right? right? And I think that we can spend a whole life, you know, doing what others expect us to do. Uh, but I didn't see myself in X number of years time regretting that I didn't want to be that person. Yeah, you hit on you hit on something also that that's in the book as well, and talk a little bit about is regret. Like regret is a huge like buzzword or not a buzzword. It's a huge trigger for me. Um, so I have this thing, Alberto. It's called the regret bucket. And so in my office at home, I have this silver bucket, and I wrote the word regret on it. And so you know, there's this whole idea of a bucket list, right? You want to do these things before you end your life, or those kind of things. Mm -hmm. And I kind of take it the other way. I'm like, I have this bucket. It's called regret. And when I come to the end of my life, I want that bucket to be as empty as possible, right? I don't That's want, cool. I don't, I want to live every day in such a way that I'm not putting anything in that damn bucket. Um, and if I do, then I need to understand why and then try to, you know, adjust or, or grow from that. So I love that you brought up regret in the fact of talking about purpose, because those things I think are very linked and, and tied together. One of the things you mentioned um, in determining your purpose, <clears throat> is it how does money relate to purpose? So you talked about, you know, you some you just got to make money sometimes, right? Or is it, a, you know, is purpose an altruistic type of thing? And it's supposed to be this high level, high brow thing. How does, how does purpose and money work together? Yeah, uh, that's a good question. I, I, I think, you know, we tend to label things. Uh, we like that, right? So to, you know, I think 
you can call it whatever you want. Uh, you can be more spiritual if you are more spiritual uh, person or not. Or you know, I, I yeah. In in this case, I don't care that much to be honest. You know, it's it's all about knowing more yourself. Um, you know, uh, seeing or, or or knowing what gives you energy, positive energy, what gives you you know uh, the motivation to keep doing things to to help others. Uh, what kind of impact you want to make. Um, on others in the world and and also what your skills and your talents are and and how you could best use them for all this right and putting all this together and then i do believe and i'm, I'm kind of uh, the proof of that but but um, you know one of the biggest fears i had to start my own business was you know uh, you know financial stability right so right. okay I had a good job and you know good career and all this then i um, i'm gonna quit I don't have a salary anymore and then I need to start from scratch, right? And I have a family, you know, uh, married. We have two uh, kids of 10 and seven years old and house, a mortgage and all this. And it's like, <laughs> yeah, I need to pay things, right? Mm -hmm. So that was one of the things that stopped me from taking that step. Um, and in the end, and you see all people, you hear all these people saying, you know, uh, yeah, if you, if you follow your purpose, the money will come, right? <laughs> And you kind of half and half, believe, you know, maybe you, you, yeah, you want to believe it, that. Right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, indeed, indeed. But, but the, the reality is that now I am a 100% I'm a believer on that, you know, and uh, it happened to me. And of course, it is good to plan, you know, to make a plan, yeah. don't jump, right. just, you know, start your own business or make a radical change in your life or something. Yeah. Most of the times, actually, to follow your purpose, you don't need to do to make a radical change. Uh, sometimes it's just in the small things, you know, and most mm -hmm. of the times. Uh, mm -hmm. But if you want to take a bigger step, then, you know, plan that, you know, to, in, into smaller steps that you can take. Maybe uh, have a bit of a buffer if it's a financial thing, uh, for example. Right. But then it will take longer or shorter, but the, the money, you know, uh, will end up coming. You know, um, yeah. once you start taking steps into the direction you really want to do, uh, to go to, towards then you know uh things will start to happen and sometimes it takes you know you had a conversation uh when you started you know maybe yep. two yep. years ago with that person yep. and didn't hear anything and then after two years he or she calls you and say hey you know i'm thinking of you for this project you know and this kind of thing is happening to me as well so yeah the money comes it can take more or less time. It all depends on how you execute on your ideas right. or how you, you know, follow your purpose. Um, but in the end, yeah, you can get paid by doing pretty much anything almost. The, the question is not yeah. that. The question is how much you will get paid, you know, and, and how yeah. much do you need to yeah. be able to follow your purpose, right? Because sometimes sure. we need less than we think. Yeah, no doubt. It's interesting because in that conversation, you, you had, uh, we talked about fear a little bit, but then a little bit further back, you talked about, you know, the experience with your father and, and you know, and, and, and trying to determine your purpose in, out of school and soccer and those kind of things. And it's an interesting thing, you know, that's a common theme is, you know, these, as a CEO, you have shareholders, right? Normally, whether they're private or whether they're public, those kind of things, um, your employees, you know, your lead team, those kind of things. In life, you also have shareholders, right? So you have the people that are close to you and those kind of things. And so talk to me about what would your advice be if your purpose is divergent from the people that care about you the most and what they're speaking into you? Because a lot of times the people that love us the most are afraid of us taking big risks. So what would your advice be to anyone that's like, man, my purpose is to do this, but people are speaking into me this and I know they love me. What, what, do, you, what do you say to that? How do you guide? Yeah, that, that's a, that's a difficult one. It happened to me as well. I could call my wife now and, and bring her here to the conversation because, you know, she 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 didn't believe in this uh, at all, and she didn't you know, really support uh, me yeah. uh, and on this uh, change. You know, she 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 always told me, yeah, yes, find another a better job. You know, <laughs> that's yeah. it. That was her right. solution. But what I could say, you know, is like people the the closer they are to you. Uh, mm -hmm the less you need to listen to them um, for these kind of things because they try to mm -hmm. overprotect you. You know, they go always, yeah. many people uh, go on the safe side 
um, and what they know and they, you know, they just, yeah, they have fear as well, right? And, and that's, you know, that's, that's a difficult situation. But at some point I had to, I had to just say to her, look, I'm going to do it. That's it. And then it could be, right. you know, what's the tension and all that. Yeah. And, and if you manage that, then in the end, everything, um, you know, yes, works out just fine. Um, so yeah, I think the key you mentioned there is at least having the conversation and dialogue, right? Be willing to listen, but also understand your, your aim and your direction. And, um, but you're right. It is a difficult thing to do, right? It is. Yeah. And then another example is my father, you know, because I, I, again, uh, he didn't allow me to study what I, I wanted to study and then all this, but you know, he, he worked in a bank for almost 40 years. So he was a, sure. a, a business guy mm -hmm. and, and, you know, now, okay. I started my business and he said, okay, okay. Well, now good, good. But he was a bit also eh, with some fear, but he didn't tell me that much. Eh? Um, but he didn't really understand that much what I was doing <laughs> with my own business. So I was speaking, normally I do everything in English, uh, but I was speaking at this conference in Ecuador. They invited me and I, I, that was in Spanish, of course. Yeah, and then I yeah. thought, well, uh, it was a free one. So I thought, well, I will invite my father to attend so he can see, you know, my keynote and he can see, yeah. you know, get maybe what I do. And then uh, so I sent him the link, he, he, you know, the Zoom link and all, everything. Uh -huh. Was a virtual one and uh and then uh you know after that um you know he sent me a message and he said yeah and and i'm very proud <laughs> you oh, know oh man and you know in the end is uh no matter the, the the path you take you know if you do your best and you try to use your skills and your talents in the end everything will work out just fine and and people around you those people who want to protect you the most and sometimes uh, they prevent you from taking that path, they will be uh, super proud of you uh, because what you are achieving as well, you know? Yeah, the, you know, so that's so good. Alberto, you just, man, you just inspired me so much today. <laughs> it's, it's so good. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so let me, I got two, I got two other questions and then you boy will run out of time. Um, do you think the door to door. And this is the, and the reason I'm asking this question is we've all had those positions where we don't think they're adding any value at the moment in time. So maybe that door to door experience for you, you know, maybe you didn't think it was adding value at the time, but do you believe that the cumulative cumulative effect of experiences allow us to be the best in our purpose? What are your thoughts on that? Definitely. I think everything you do uh, makes you the person you are right. And, and, and helps you to get better. Um, and sometimes it's not right away. You don't see it right away, but maybe you know, uh, in some years from now, you will see it and you will appreciate that. And and definitely, specifically this one, um, I normally say that this is the the worst working uh, professional experience of my life because I, you know, I I did that for a year, which was quite a lot already. Um, but um, I hated that job, but it's the one that I appreciate the most because. Uh, one of the things I didn't do before working selling books uh, door to door was reading. I didn't I didn't read much, you know. Um, and that was based on you know, my experience reading at school and these boring right. books that you need to read and all this. Right. right uh, yeah. But because you know, at every company I worked for, I did this exercise unconsciously. So I was finding the purpose of my company and the products I was mm -hmm. selling for me to be able to do my job because otherwise i couldn't because i didn't like sales um so for me i with those books i was you know we were targeting family families with kids young kids um so i was bringing a safe you know environment for those kids to learn and to right. you know do their homework and all that and that's how i thought about it and then because i was sitting at so many you know couches uh, on so many couches at uh, people's uh, homes you know, I, I, I saw that many people valued books so much and that got me thinking and inspired me to say, well, maybe I need to give it a try. And then uh, thanks to that, I, I, I tried uh, reading um, and then I love reading now and I read, you know, I, I can read more, but I, I read quite a lot and, and I learn a lot thanks to that as well. So, yeah. Super cool. Super cool. So my last question, so maybe a little actionable takeaway. 
So I'm a client, I'm a new client. I come to you and I'm like, man, Alberto, how do I start finding my purpose? What can I do today to start figuring out what my purpose is? I may not come up with the answer today, but what would you tell me to start doing today in order to try and start that journey? Uh, well, the, the, the first uh, thing to do is, is to take the time to do it. You know, the problem is that most of the, most people are very busy all the time. We are good at getting busy. And if we don't have anything to do, we will find something. We are always in meetings and all that. Um, so taking the time to think about stuff is, is the first step. Um, then, you know, what I do with them, and I work with also teams and organizations to help them find their purpose. So, you know, so that's a different kind of um, work, but it all comes to, you know, um, you know, who, who, who are you, you know, uh, who are you as a person? Again, what gives you energy, you know, uh, what your strengths are, um, what you, your talents are and, and what you, you really love doing. And, and, and then see also combining that with the impact that you want to make on the, on the world. Uh, so there's this, I don't know if you know, know about this, the Ikigai, uh, Ikigai word, no? <laughs> uh, okay, no. Eh? So, you know, there is a diagram that I use as a base of my exercise as well. So I didn't do, I didn't create the diagram myself, but I asked other questions around that as well. And basically it is a, a Venn diagram of four circles, right? Okay, and, yes. You no. Know, yep. What you love doing, what you are good at, what the world needs yep. and what you can get paid for. Um, so I use that as a base and people use this word Ikigai, which is a Japanese word for a similar thing, but not exactly the same, mm -hmm. but, um, you know, it is a combination of, in the end, the main three, you know, doing things you like that gives you energy, uh, things that you are good at, you can always get better and you can always be good at something you love doing because mm -hmm. by practice you will become better. Uh, and then especially, you know, okay, what kind of value you want to bring to others, uh, what kind of impact you want to make. And then the getting paid part, again, uh, you, it will come eventually and that will depend on how you, you follow your purpose. But um, that's the least important. The most important is doing something that you really like doing because otherwise it's not sustainable. And most yep. people just keep on doing things. Um, they become good at doing things just because they do them, right? They start in finance and then, you know, they're good in finance because they spend 10 years in finance. But if they don't like it, they can get paid, they can, you know, whatever, <laughs> but they will feel unhappy and unfulfilled right. uh, because, you know, they don't, they don't follow, uh, they don't do, yeah, they don't follow the heart of what they really love doing. No. Yeah, I love, I love, you know, what you talked about there is, you know, you, we, you just gave us three steps to start the process of identifying our purpose, you know, and the money part is there, but like you said, it doesn't need to be the main three. I love that. You know, <clears throat> Alberto, you've been great today. You've taught me a lot about purpose. I hope everyone that's listening or watching learned something about purpose today. You definitely are the chief purpose officer, my friend. Um, <laughs> so I appreciate it. You know, we talked about um, how to value your purpose. We talked about, you know, you have to choose something that it's okay to not have your purpose right there in format. Um, you know, how to make money through the process. Uh, we talked about, you know, just so much about just starting, which is great. We also talked about shareholders and who to listen to, not to listen to. Uh, boy, this was a really a great episode. I really appreciate it, Alberto. Well, th thank you. Thank you again for, uh, for inviting me. And I, yeah, indeed, I hope uh, yeah, this can add value to, to uh, at least uh, some listeners and, uh, yeah. and, and, and hopefully they get inspired to, um, to start uncovering their purpose, taking that time to do it and to think about what the, you know, what they really want to do, right? So I got to tell everyone that's listening or watching, Alberto is a real person, just like all of our <laughs> guests. Uh, he's, he's not, <laughs> this is not a paid advertisement. He is not an actor. He really is out making a living, following his purpose, helping people find their purpose. If you want to reach out and contact him, I'm going to link either information above or below on how to get in touch with him. LinkedIn is a great way to get in touch with um, Alberto. Go look at his LinkedIn profile. It's got a lot of good information there. It has a lot of great posts and content. But most importantly, if any of this resonates with you, reach out for Alberto. He's a real person. Like I said, he will get back to you. He did get back to me. That's how we're sitting here having this conversation today. And uh, Alberto, thank you for being a given person and uh, following your purpose. Well, thank you for inviting me, Robert, and great to meet you. And, and yeah, again, hopefully 
um, yeah, we can add value with this episode to your listeners. Excellent. So don't let this fall on your ears or just your eyes. Go out, take some action, do something with what you heard today. Reach out for Alberto and we'll see you on the next episode of the CEO for Life Experience. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.